In the late 1980s, solar physicist Piers Corbin decided to try a radically new way of forecasting the weather. Despite the huge resources of the official Met Office, Corbin's new technique consistently produced more accurate results. He was hailed in the national press as a super weather man. The secret of his success was the sun. The origin of our solar weather technique of long-range forecasting came originally from study of sunspots and a desire to predict those. And then I realized it was actually much more interesting to use the sun to predict the weather. Sunspots, we now know, are intense magnetic fields which appear at times of higher solar activity. But for many hundreds of years, long before this was properly understood, astronomers around the world used to count the number of sunspots in the belief that more spots heralded warmer weather. In 1893, the British astronomer Edward Maunder observed that during the Little Ice Age, there were barely any spots visible on the sun a period of solar inactivity which became known as the Maunder Minimum. But how reliable are sunspots as an indicator of the weather? Okay, I decided to test it by gambling on the weather through William Hill against what the Met Office said was a, you know, a normal expectation. And I won money month after month after month after month. Last winter the Met Office said it could be, or would be, an exceptionally cold winter. We said, no, that is nonsense, it's going to be very close to normal. And we specifically said when it would be cold, i.e. after Christmas and February. We were right, they were wrong. In 1991, senior scientists at the Danish Meteorological Institute decided to compile a record of sunspots in the 20th century and compare it with the temperature record. What they found was an incredibly close correlation between what the sun was doing and changes in temperature on Earth. Solar activity, they found, rose sharply to 1940, fell back for four decades until the 1970s, and then rose again after that. To the Harvard astrophysicists and many other scientists, the conclusion is inescapable. The Sun is driving climate change. CO2 is irrelevant. Our next guest told, said he, he can clearly say, I told you so. Back in November, the UK's government weather forecasting office claimed that this winter would be mild. That's the same office pushing a global warming agenda. But here's the forecast for this winter, as predicted in November by astrophysicist and meteorologist Piers Corbin. Take a listen. The winter, December to February, inclusive in Britain and Europe will be exceptionally cold and snowy like hell frozen over at times. <laughs> he was right. It feels like that outside right now. You're looking at video of an extremely snowy Britain from this week. So much for global warming. He says prepare for the ice age. Piers Corbin joins us now. Piers, how did you pull this off? How did you manage to be so accurate when everyone else in that office was saying, uh-uh, it's not going to happen? Well, uh, the uh, science, so-called, of these uh, scientists you referred to is failed science based on fraudulent data. We understand that the, the, the sun, solar particle and magnetic effects, which control uh, Earth's weather and climate and we're able to predict this a long time ahead. So we predicted that this December would be the coldest for a uh, hundred years which it has been as it's shown on this and we also predicted uh, uh, it, on the 12th of December that northeast and east USA would suffer the most horrendous blizzards for decades and we actually put out a tweet saying you ain't seen nothing yet now yeah now in fact we haven't seen anything yet and because you now are predicting that there is global cooling taking place yeah and that seems yes. to fly in the face of what we're hearing at large in fact today in the new york times a piece about the trend of global warming and their argument is from scientists they say that because we're seeing global warming that's why we're seeing such weather extremes do you buy that science <laughs> 
No, it is complete nonsense. It's fiction. It it's, comes from a cult ideology. There's no science in there, no facts to back them up. Historically, the only correlation between carbon dioxide and temperatures over millions of years is that world temperatures drive carbon dioxide levels, not the other way around. What they have is they fiddle the facts in order to justify uh, political attacks, carbon trading, extra taxation uh, on, on the public. But, but, it but, is Piers, a but Piers, you know, the critics would stopped. say, well, wait a second. They'd say, hold on a second, Piers. They're saying we're seeing global ice, uh, ice sheets melting. We're seeing the Arctic Circle being opened up in such a way that Russia now laying claim to certain <laughs> land up there that never well, before. Yeah. We have ships going up there. What do you say to them? Well, fine. The ships have been up there before. It's, it's all happened before. And in fact, it is now uh, closing up again in the Arctic, and the Antarctic has been cooling for the last 30 years. We are just past the peak of a world temperature uh, uh, rise, uh, and we are now falling, and it's going to carry on falling in general for the next 25 years. And all these major extreme events around the world, the biggest ones, such as the heat wave in Russia and the floods in, and the ending of the heat wave in Russia and the ending of the floods in Pakistan, were predicted by us using our solar uh, magnetic uh, theory, uh, which you can find out more of on weatheraction.com, our website. Uh, beyond that, I want to get your Twitter address because I'm going to start following on Twitter so I can predict when I need <laughs> to get out the snow boots. What's your Twitter address, Piers? Uh, Twitter address is um, <laughs> HTTP, etc. Twitter.com forward slash Piers underscore Corbyn. It's uh, Piers as on this if you Corbin. can see the... There you go. That's the one. Yeah, I might need my glasses to see that. Piers, thank you for being <laughs> okay. accurate. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have a good new year as well.